Half a day, my name is Darlene Garcia and I'm an advanced certified grief recovery specialist, HR consultant, self-love coach, and speaker. If you're watching this video, that means that you're either an HR professional or a leader within your organization. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about why I believe the world is grieving and then share with you some ways that you can help your employees either transition back into the workplace or help them to continue to work remotely. So first, why do I believe the world is grieving? The definition of grief that we use in our grief recovery method programs is that grief is a conflicting feelings caused by the end of or change in a familiar pattern of behavior. When you think about the world that we're in today, there's so much that has changed or ended for us. What was familiar to us no longer exists. And now we're having to go and um, practice some new familiarities in our life as things start to change again um, with transitioning back into society. And so all of us, not just our employees, but ourselves included, are dealing with a lot of different emotions. And one of the main emotions that we feel as human beings as a reaction to loss is fear. There's so many fears around what's going on in our world today. The biggest one is the fear of the unknown. There's so many things that we still don't know about this coronavirus and how we're all going to adapt back into society. So if your employees are scared, I'm gonna bet that you're scared too because we all have fears, let's face it. There's so many different things that we could be fearing from a personal perspective and also from a professional perspective. So how then can we go forward and help and support our employees through these transitions, through these changes, through all of the unfamiliar things that we're facing? Well, the first thing is, as leaders and as HR professionals, you want to go first. And what I mean by that is you need to be honest, tell your truth, and more importantly, tell your emotional truth. It's not something that is very easy to do, and I get that, right? Sharing our emotional truth is, um, is not uh, something that we, we would normally do in our world. But again, everything that's going on today is not something that we're used to anyway. So I want to encourage you to be courageous and tell your emotional truth. It's been proven that as leaders, when we go first, we then give our employees, our children, the people that we're leading, the courage to also tell their truth, to have that safe space because you were honest first before they did. And so we're going to lead by example. The second thing is you want to be as transparent as possible. Whatever is happening within your organization, whatever guidelines, whatever operational things that you need to go through in order to thrive in today's world, you need to be honest with your employees about what that is. I know that you can't share everything. I get that. I used to be in a corporate HR space myself. But what you can share with them, it's important that you do. And one of the things about transparency is also be honest about what you don't know. There's so many things that are out of our control, um, especially when it comes to what the government is going to be handing down to us as citizens, right? Um, and so there are some things that you're going um, to have to adapt to based on the government guidelines or based on laws that could change. And so there may be some things that are still unclear and it's okay to tell your employees that you don't have all the answers. They'd rather you tell that truth than to pretend that you know it all. The other thing is you want to allow them to be a part of the solution. For example, if you have an employee that needs to report back to work because that's what their job requires and they're still afraid to come back to work, you want them to first be able to feel safe enough to tell you their truth, their emotional truth, acknowledge it and don't criticize or judge it, but then ask them how can you work together to come up with a solution so that they can still get their job done. You may not agree at the end of the day, but at least if you're hearing them out, they may come up with something that you never even thought of and that actually could work. So allow them to be a part of the solution. And then lastly, you wanna do regular check-ins with your employees. One of the things that we forget sometimes as leaders because we're so busy trying to run the organization 
is checking in with our employees. And what I mean by that is to genuinely check with them, see how their day is going, ask them how their family is doing, do an emotional check-in, where are your feelings at today? And then be ready to truly listen, acknowledge where they're at, don't judge, don't criticize, and just allow them to express themselves. I guarantee you that when you do regular check-ins and you show your employees that you care, that they're gonna trust you, they're gonna feel safe with the guidelines that you're putting forth for them because they know that you have their best interest in mind. So I hope that all of these things at least will help you get through as you transition back into society. I wanna wish you all the best as you continue to allow your organization to adapt to all of these changes that are, we're all facing in the world today. And know that I am always available by email. My email address is darlene at darlenegarcia.org. And I'd love to hear from you and see how these things are working or not working. I mean, if there's anything more that I could provide for you to allow you to be there to support your employees as they transition and as you all transition um, back into society. Until then, I wish you all love, light, and hope.